All right, hello, welcome to the Maybe Pile Show. I am your host, as always, Kirioku Writes, and here with me I have my ever amazing co-host, Mummify Tony. How are you doing, Tony? Uh, everything's leaning to the left there, Kay. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, I guess I'm doing just about the same. The novel is still progressing. Like I said last time, I am in the process of a of a novel, and it's it's really really good. Uh, you know, a few bumps in the road here and there, but other than that, it's pretty pretty smooth considering all the other stuff I've done with writing, and it's, it's actually not that bad at the moment. It seems like it's going along well, and it's a novel idea. <laughs> ha! Thank you. So, uh, speaking of writing books and whatnot, well, I don't. All right, uh, I'll let you continue on your books, and then I'll. No, I'm done. I'm done. Go ahead. Okay, good. I didn't want to be like, it's all about me. No. Uh, so I was working on editing last week's episode and I got to thinking about the NaNoWriMo stuff that I was talking about. And uh, I was like, oh yeah, NaNoWriMo. And I'm like, oh, hey, they updated their website. Oh, okay. And then it's like, wait, I wrote 44,000 words last week or last last year? No way. That story didn't go anywhere. I was meandering and doing nothing with it. There's no way. I like... I went in to look for it last night while I was working on editing and I was like, what, is, what? No, I, I don't know where it is. I, I thought I lost it, but today at work, I actually went into my work uh, G drive and uh, found it there. And I was like, why, why is this on my work G, uh, G drive? I'm like that. Why was I? Oh wait, no, no. Yep. My mindset last year, I would be totally just working on my, uh, 15,000 words a day novel at work and not actually working. Nope, that that 100% tracks. <laughs> wow. You must live on Twitter, my man, because I, I saw you, like, every time you tell me something, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I remember seeing that on Twitter. Well, I remember seeing that on Twitter, too, except for the part where you said that you found it. I didn't know yeah. that you found it. I'm glad I'm glad that you did find it. Did you, uh, did you read through it any? I was reading through it a little bit today. I was making sure that I was kind of like, oh, yeah, did... Now that I haven't looked at it in almost a year, does it still like line up? Does it track? Does it make sense to the reader? And I'm like, yeah, there's a couple of things where the way I phrase things can be confusing. But when I sat there and like looked at it for a second, I was like, oh, no, OK, I, I understand what I'm trying to say there. But obviously I shouldn't have to. I should probably re go back and rewrite something. But actually looking at it, no, I I totally got to 44,000 words uh, last year in the month of November. Wow. And I and I was like, yeah, go me. I did good at this. That is that is really good. I think my novel that I'm currently writing, I think it's I think it's just surpassed 6,800 words at the 6, moment. So, OK, yeah, 6,800. So it's not really it's not all that long yet. And some of the chapters are only like a couple of pages long. So I'm working on trying to extend them, you know, make it a full length novel, not just a novella. You know, uh -huh. I think a novella is like only 150 pages and a novel, like a full length novel is like two to three hundred or something like that. Are you going to tell her about your novella? <laughs> uh, well, not really, since not not really considering it's not really it's not even close to being done yet. But I'm just, uh, I've made this mistake before, and I don't think I talked about this, where, um, you can just edit this out if I, if I already talked about it, but it's like, you, anybody can sit down and write something, but it's when you, when you go back into what you've already done, and you start editing things, and changing things, and improving things, that's, that's where the real work is. So mm -hmm. what I'm doing right now isn't really the, the hard part, I'm just writing the story, when I go back and improve the story, that's when the real work begins. Hmm. And I guess I've never gotten to that point in my writing. I've only been, uh, I've, I've essentially only blasted it out for the sake of um, NaNoWriMo. And then um, just kind of, I, I don't know, just... It was like, well, November's done. Leave it alone. Don't even bother with it. I like all my stories, even the one time that I actually beat the uh, 50,000 word uh, score. I, I never went back to like edit it or change anything. I think I might've done like maybe a little bit of edits, but it was never finished. I mean, none of my stories were finished. And I think that's just because uh, I don't, I don't want to go back and try to fix anything. I just wanted to get it out. And I guess like 
if anybody ever felt like being an editor for me or, you know, uh, proofreading any of my stories, I guess. But at the same time, I'm like, nobody cares about what I have to write. So it's like, I'm never going to sit there. Well, wait, scratch that. Actually, someone did do that one time, but you know, they, they, how do I put this? They're, they're not, I don't know. They were just like looking at it for just enjoyment from something that I made sort of like just listening to the podcast, you know, they they wouldn't, they weren't going into it like to be necessarily critical or, uh, constructive at all. It was more or less, they just wanted to, uh, read what I was writing and it wasn't so much that they, you know, were going into it to try to help. It's just like, Oh, Hey, uh, Tony wrote this thing. Let me go read it real quick. You know, kind of thing. And I'm like, and I, I guess I appreciate it. They did make some notes on it, but, they barely got like a chapter in and I'm like, that either says to the seriousness of their dedication to helping me or their willingness to put up with my bullshit writing. (laughs) I don't know. I mean, the reason I, the reason I, you know, try to take my writing so serious is because I actually want to publish this thing. You know, I want to make a career out of the whole thing. So that's why I'm like, you know, trying to be like, you know, go back in there, make sure everything is absolutely perfect or as close to perfect as it can possibly be. Right. Of course, keeping in mind your words from last week about, you know, nothing's going to be perfect and you just need to eventually send it out. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, if if you just, if you just sit there and you just keep reworking and rewriting and editing and editing and editing, you're never going to finish it. Never. Right. But anyway, that's all, that's all harping on old stuff that we already talked about last week though. Yeah, we already did. We already talked about all that. I, I, we might have had this entire conversation last week. I mean, except yep. for the bit about somebody writing your stuff. So, who knows? Yeah. So, I guess we can shift gears here. Uh, I was playing a little bit of Fortnite before we got on the game. That Ugh. game is fun since they came out with the second. You know, I guess the second chapter, Fortnite Chapter Two. I actually, I'm actually enjoying it. I didn't really like. I didn't like what they did with it for season, like season seven through season ten. I was just absolutely not interested at all. The fact that you actually can tell what seasons it was that, you know, you actually cared about it and didn't care about it is miles more care and effort than I ever put into Fortnite. I think I downloaded it for maybe three games. I think it's still installed on my computer somewhere, but I just do not care about it at all. (laughs) I I played it. I think I bought the Battle Pass for season what was it maybe season four i think i bought the battle pass season four to season uh season six maybe even season five so just a little bit but i played it like all the way up through season season nine Mm -hmm. either season nine or season eight and i just you know i just did the free stuff for those seasons but i bought the battle pass like two or three times you know Mm -hmm. but uh when they added, like, the mechs into the game and stuff like that, that's when I was really just, I was like, okay, I don't really, I don't really care about this anymore. There are mechs in Fortnite? There were, like, of, like, a few seasons ago, there were, there were mechs, and it was just like, eh, no. If I want mechs, I'll go play Titanfall 2. Well, if, if you want, really mechs, want mechs, you should go play, um, Robotech. Never heard of that one. You've never heard of Robotech? No. Oh have. my god, Robotech is like the hipster Gundam. Like yeah, Robotech video games are like touted as like the like mech fighting shooting walker kind of like actual warfare kind of stuff. It's like people who play Robotech are like some of like from at least my perce- my perception of them, like the most hardcore people. Like Robotech once had a video game, I think it was for the PlayStation 2 that ca- that you could buy like this hundred and fifty two hundred dollar like expansion uh controller Damn. that was like this super wide control uh paddle you know like how some racing games you can grab like the steering wheel and shifter and yeah braking gas pedals no imagine that but like on steroids like an entire airplane cockpit kind of amount of buttons this is like that thing that uh, Farming Simulator came out with a few years ago. <laughs> they had like this massive control panel and a joystick and a steering wheel. I would say bigger. Bigger? Wow. I don't know. I <laughs> don't know what Farming Simulator put out, but I have a feeling it's going to be bigger. Nice. 
Well, it was like oh, all the way back in like 2015, 16. It was a few years ago when they did it. But it was like they. It was like this. It wasn't that big, but it was like a control panel with a bunch of switches, a steering wheel, and some pedals. So basically, run of the mill racing stuff. You know, steering wheel pedals, just with a a very cheap plastic uh, control panel added on to it. So you hmm. know, it, it wasn't that. I, I've never played Farming Simulator, but eh, it, it didn't look all that great. <laughs> Yeah, but okay. uh, Fortnite Chapter 2 so far, I'm enjoying it. It's not that bad. I've uh, They actually have a... I think they came out with it just today. They dropped a little uh, event. It's called the Storm King. And, wow, is it fun. It, it's a little difficult if you don't have a good team. Like, if you don't have a good team, you're, you're going to get overwhelmed by all the zombies and, and shit like that. But if you... If, if you get a decent... If you get a decent group of people with you, it's going to be really, really, really fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I did that. I beat that. And uh, I actually might buy the Battle Pass for this season. I might. Because here's the thing. I'm currently on the free version of the Battle Pass. And I've already leveled up like four times in like two hours. Because that event gives you so much XP. It is unbelievable. It is insane. And I love it. So... If if I if I feel like it tomorrow, I'll probably buy the battle pass because the event is here for like another six days. Mm -hmm. So I I might just get the battle pass and just level up like a fuck ton of times. So it's it's pretty fun. Well, I mean, I'm not as much as I like poo poo on it or you know make fun of people who do enjoy it. You know, honestly, that's probably not the healthiest thing to do. And honestly, like I I should actually take appreciation of the fact that you know you find enjoyment out of it so you might so i might as well just kind of go with it and be like all right you know what Kay, if you want to go off and play the game and have fun with it you know who am i to say no i mean you know we're not gonna i'm not here to like i don't know like if someone was turning around and saying like Ew, the thing you enjoy i'd be like well don't be a dick you know and so you know what if you if you have fun with Fortnite, you know that really sure go ahead have fun bud you know i'm not gonna you know, make fun of you. Unlike, you know, I the rest care. of the world who sits there and be like, uh, kids are doing the Fortnite dances, uh, no Fortnite costumes. Uh. I'm like, I, I, I must, I must admit the Fortnite, seeing kids do Fortnite dances in public is very, very cringe. I will admit that. <laughs> I'm not going to deny that it is, but, uh, but Fortnite, it's just, it's just one of those things where you either, where you either love it, you practically worship it, or you absolutely despise it. But, uh, it, it's just at that point, you know, I always say that, you know, games like Fortnite, like Minecraft, when they get mm -hmm. that big, they just get big enough to the point where it's cool to hate. So Fortnite mm -hmm. is just at that point where now it's cool to hate. You know, that, that's it, the way I view it. Yeah, and I guess it's been at that point for a couple of years now. It, I mean, it, it and, has. And even I've sat there and uh, tried to, uh, um, I don't know, uh, not, not try, but... Uh, it's gotten to the point that even I've sat there and learned how to do the dances ironically, just to be like, oh, 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 look at me, I'm doing the floss thing. Oh, I need, I know how to do the like <laughs> arm flipping knee back and forth thing. And it's like, well, Anthony, why'd you do that? Well, yeah, why did I do that? Oh, wait, why do I, why do I know how to do Fortnite dances ironically? What? And then like I was making fun of it at uh, Phoenix Comic Con or should I say Phoenix fan fusion last year, there was this one booth that was selling a bunch of decals and whatnot and playing a lot of like popular internet music. Like, uh, I don't know, just a lot of like internet pop music. And I was like sitting there like doing the, um, I think it's called like the orange Julius where it's like the arms are oh, going the, back and oh, forth. The orange and justice, orange justice, I guess. I don't know where like the yeah. knees are going back and forth and the arms are flapping. And I'm yeah, just like yeah, doing that to, I think it was like the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers theme and my <laughs> buddy's brother was just looking at me like, what the hell is wrong with you? Who, why, who are you? And then like some guy like came up and he's like, yeah, man, do and he like started doing like another thing. And I'm like, oh no, oh no, he thinks I'm one of him. Oh God. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, it's just. I don't know. Fortnite is just one of those all-encompassing things where, unless you're Amish, you know what it is. 
<laughs> no, no, no. I'm pretty sure there are Amish people out there that still know what Fortnite is. Probably, because uh, where I am, there are a lot of Amish people. So, and the, since they can't, you know, since they're religiously not allowed to drive, mm-hmm. they have to either take their buggies, walk, or they can actually... Apparently, they're not allowed to drive themselves, but if they pay somebody to drive them around, then it's perfectly fine for their religion. That's they a little weird Uber? in my opinion, but to which their own. I swear, if an Amish person ever called an Uber, uh, an Uber, I would just die laughing. Oh, they can't do that since they're not allowed to use uh, smartphones, but I, they I can think... use they can use a uh, a landline. They actually have the, like every Amish community is allowed to have like a single landline. Uh-huh. Like they have like a phone booth, and that's how that that's their contact. So if, mm. because like we've had our Amish people come over and like do repairs on our house and stuff like that. They're actually they are amazing carpenters. They're really really good at what they do. I believe it. So like what you so what you do is you call their you know their one phone and whoever answers, you know you just have to say oh I'd like to talk to so and so and they'll be like well he's not available right now let me take a message for you or. You know, something like they have like very they have like a really weird accent. I'm not even going to try anymore to to imitate it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they're they're nice people. They're very nice people. And they're really they're obviously really hardworking since that's their way of life. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But it, anyway, that went way off track. That's that's but that's the only way that I would know of that. A, that an Amish person would know about Fortnite is if they were writing with somebody who knew about it. Or if they were selling their produce, because they sell produce on, like, the side of the road, like, they have a produce stand. Or mm-hmm. if somebody stopped there and they saw, like, a kid, like, do a Fortnite dance, that's probably the only way they would have knowledge of the game. <laughs> and then they'd be like, that that boy, he, he he's a sinner, <laughs> he, he's flapping his arms back and forth, and uh, that's just <laughs> not right. I, they, I don't think they really give a crap. I really don't think the Amish give a damn. I don't really but dancing? Dancing, dancing's the devil's work. They they don't actually they don't like scoff at you or wag their finger at you or anything like that. They just go about their own business. Okay, so I don't have to worry about uh, lifestyle being circa or Beaumont, Texas, circa nineteen seventy nine. I want to say my uh, Footloose time frame might be way off. I've never seen that movie. Oh my goodness! Don't even bother. <laughs> I've okay, well, let me rephrase it. that. If you if you're given the option to see the original Kevin Bacon one, sure, great, fantastic, whatever, go for it. If you have the option to go see the what was it like 2005, 2007 version, don't. It is so bad. I I'm just like, who 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 decided to remake Footloose? Like, who in their right mind was like, oh yeah, you know what movie needs to be remade? Footloose. Now, that's a time-honored classic that definitely won't be warped by time. Like, the the premise at the beginning, uh, just the idea of Footloose, and, the, and obviously since you haven't seen it, I'll break it down real quick. A uh, local pasture of a small Texan, uh, Dex, a Texas town called Beaumont, uh, which I think is actually based off a real si- uh, town in Texas. I could be wrong, but whatever. Anyway, Beaumont is uh, very close to their church and whatnot, and the father of the church, his son died on the way home from uh, a party outside of the city one time. So because of that, the preacher went on a uh, a uh, like a pilgrimage to not a pilgrimage, but like a, a a campaign to get music and dancing banned from the city. And so nobody was allowed to dance or thing. And it's like, it's such a dumb and out there concept that only like the, yeah, man, we're just want to be, we're just kids and we just want to dance and have fun. No, you're uh, dancing's a bad and you want to whatever. It's just like a dumb movie from back in the day that, you know, it's like, Oh, you can sit there and watch it for like 17, 18, 20 year old Kevin Bacon and be like, Hey, he's super young. That's weird. Time does have that effect on people. Uh, but, you know, and I think Sarah Jessica Parker is in it as well, but I could be wrong. But it's just one of those movies that it's like, you know, it's it's a classic and every high school had to redo Footloose and it launched Kenny Loggins' career. Wait, Kenny Loggins? No. Uh. Kenny Loggins. Did he do, did he do Footloose? 
I don't know. I could I be wrong. No idea. But anyway, it's just one of those old movies that definitely could have maybe been a premise back then. But nowadays, it's like, who would outlaw dancing? Honestly, like, who would think that this would be a realistic thing? I think, I think Battleship has a more at more likelihood <laughs> come oh, to wow. passness behind it versus Footloose being made today. It's like, no, nobody's going to ban music. Nobody's going to ban dancing. Get out yeah, of here. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think my I think high school. I don't, think, I don't think my. I don't think my school ever did Footloose. They did uh, Little Shop of Horrors and like a bunch of different ones, but mm-hmm. they didn't do Footloose. They did like. I'm trying to think of the other ones that they did. Uh I'm not. I'm not sure which other ones they did, but they they were really good actors back in the day. Nice. Yeah. yeah. What was it? I think. Thinking back to what my high school did, I think it was. I think it was Footloose, uh, Hudsucker Proxy, Soap Dish, I want to say. I could be wrong. I don't know. But, like, I think there was a there was a year where literally every school in the Mesa Public Schools the District all did Footloose. And I was like, why? Why are we all doing Footloose? Or maybe it wasn't Footloose, but it was some other musical. But it was like... Everybody was doing it. And I'm like, why? <laughs> it's literally like Dobson High School, Chandler High School, and uh, I want to say it was either Mesa or Westwood. Westwood? Was Westwood a high school? No, Westwood was a junior high. I don't know. But it was like, like I said, it was every school in the Mesa public school system, the school district where I'm at, where I went yeah. to school, was doing it. And it was so absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, that's really something. <laughs> Ugh. So anyway, so, enough of uh, harking on that. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, moving on from, from Fortnite and dancing, uh, another game that just came out like literally a couple days ago, I think, was uh, Modern Warfare. Ugh. Why, why is every out. game that came out, like, every game you want to talk about just instantly met with me going, ugh. I'm not really into Modern Warfare myself. I'm just waiting for Black Ops 5. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just waiting <laughs> Just, just wait, just waiting for that to happen because it's gonna happen. You know it is. No, I didn't no, like no, three. No, I, I, I didn't like you. four, but I'm just waiting for five. Wait, there was a Black Ops five four. Yeah, of course there was. I'm pretty sure. Oh there my was god. One. Yeah, Black Ops four wasn't that. Wasn't that the? I'm pretty sure Black Ops four was literally just a battle royale. I'm pretty sure that was where Ugh. they had no campaign. It was just a battle royale. That was all Black Ops four was. Gross. And yeah, I know. It actually actually it was really fucking funny. Because my friends, all of my friends bought Black Ops 4. And they're like, oh, okay, you gotta buy it. You have to buy it. You have to buy Black Ops 4. You know, it, it's it's way better than Fortnite. You know, it's it's a lot better. It's, it's you know, it's just more fun. The map's bigger and more detailed. And, you know, everybody was like, you know, just going off about it. And I was like, I'll tell you what. If you dudes are still playing it, like, another month from now, I'll buy it and play with you. Guess what mm-hmm. happened? They all quit and they went back to Fortnite. Apex came out. Oh yeah, that's right. That's why nobody <laughs> cared about it. A- A- Apex came out and then everybody's like, "Oh my god, Apex! You got to play Apex." And I actually did play Apex and it was actually pretty good, but I can't play it that often because I have like serious motion sickness. And mm-hmm. games like COD, games like Apex, they really fuck with me, so I can't really mm-hmm. play them for, like, more than 30 minutes at a time. Well, you know, that's actually really great, because there's a game that I would really want you to get, and we gotta play it all the time. You you know that, Kay? I just, I feel like uh, we should, you should really get into this game that I really think you should play, because it's a battle royale, and, it, and it's not like all the other ones. Uh, it's called Super Animal Royale. Super Animal Royale? Super Animal Royale. It's a 2D top down uh, 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 Royale fighter, but instead of just normal uh, humans shooting humans or robots shooting humans or humans shooting any other thing, they're they're little animals. They're little like tigers and bears and well, I don't think there's actually no, there are bears and like dogs and tigers and cats and deer and birds and other things. It's like that a furry are, convention. Exactly. (laughs) Admittedly, it is very, very popular in the furry community. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to ignore that for now because it, it, it's 
mighty fun and it's it actually is in early development right now or uh beta what do they call it early early access that's what it's called early access yeah early access and it and i was like i i tried the free version for like a couple of rounds and i'm like you know what it's in free access and it's like 12 bucks whatever for the game to be able to actually like save your items and whatnot and i'm like yeah okay i'll go in on this I, I I can do like 12 bucks on this. So I started playing it and I'm like, yeah. And it's not too demanding on my computer and it's great and it's fun. And I've actually won a couple of games. I think I'm just about to hit uh, 10 wins out of maybe 30 or 40 games. Nice. Not bad. So I'm like, cool. Either it's super easy to play against these people or I'm uh, actually decent at this game so i'm like yay cool and, and nice. it, like i said it's all top down shooter so you don't necessarily have to worry about a lot of motion sickness with it either good good very good so, so it's like all right cool and i and the last time i played it or like two times before my two games ago i uh, unlocked the uh cotton candy deer and it's cool because like i i was playing as this deer for a long time and uh it was just a normal deer whatever and some of the items that have been dropping for him uh for my guy uh was like a red flannel shirt and then i think i had a a forestry service kind of mounty looking hat so i had that on and i'm like haha canadian af and then (laughs) or was no i think it was a promo code that i put in that i got those two items but whatever and so i'm just going through your maple syrup grenades (laughs) <laughs> there i there are regular uh grenades there are skunk grenades that are like smoke there are bananas that slip people up and i want to say there's one other thing but i could be wrong i can't remember though but yeah uh and i nice. was like i you can you can get you can use your regular dna to unlock new animals and then within that animal the more the more you play that animal, the more of that animal's uh, essence or whatever it is that you're able to use to unlock different versions of that animal. And I was just like, nope, I'm going to main, I'm going to go directly for this uh, blue and pink uh, deer. And I'm like, yes, I got it. Nice. That sounds pretty cool. I'll have to check this out. Yeah, it's fun game. I mean, it's got a free to play version and it's not like it hinders you in any way you just can't save the items that you would normally unlock because of it but if you ever do buy the real version it'll be like great now you can use all these items you unlocked cool that's pretty sweet i like that yeah so that was that was a game that i recently picked up and got into uh you know i wonder how long the battle royale is gonna last like the fact i wonder how long it's going to last until something else comes up to dethrone it you know until like some hot new freshness comes along like a uh, real time PVP uh no turn based uh like what like the idea of um civilization like the turn based oh. um whatever that's going to be the next thing i'm predicting it right now as of 10:29 at 9:30 uh Arizona standard time we i'm predicting that the next big video game uh genre is going to be turn based strategy games. That's it. And so games not, like Civilization making a comeback, huh? Civilization or if there's ever like like I'm I'm picturing it to be a uh like a StarCraft sort of thing, oh. but turn based, okay. not real time. You know what I mean? Not sure how I feel about turn based. I know that was like a thing for uh Final Fantasy. I actually think I think Final Fantasy XV had like an option where you could either do real time combat or turn based combat. I think. Don't quote me on that. I don't know for sure. The last Final Fantasy I paid attention to was Final Fantasy X. Ah ha 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 ah ha ha. Eh, shut up. You know, I don't know. Uh, fifteen wasn't all that bad. I actually had a friend before he uh, stopped being my friend. No big deal. But uh, he he played through like the entirety of the. Uh, of the base game it was it was pretty fun it was pretty interesting uh the the world was nice. really big the open world was really interesting and the, yeah i mean uh, the regalia was a really fantastic car really cool <laughs> oh yeah 15 was the boys trip okay 
yeah I, I i hear i keep hearing people like crap on that game about the fact that it's like oh the boy band one and i'm like and it's not that bad really what of it what was okay from the premise of the people, game that i, I can think of to those go oh, real quick sorry to interrupt but to those people i question did you even play the game like do you even know the characters or anything like that i mean come on just spend some time with them if you still don't like it, then fine. If you do, maybe maybe it'll change your maybe it'll change your tune a little bit. Who knows? Either way, and you're saying it was like okay. Well, all right. What what do people make fun of fifteen about? Okay, it's it's like three or four dudes in a car going from one place back to a castle or away from a castle or I don't know. Don't they, tell they, me. They, but don't yeah, it's, it's don't a tell me. It's a little hard to explain anyway. So I so you don't have to but worry about that. The thing is, I'm like okay. Well, what was the concept of ten? All right. Uh, like a couple of guys and like three girls running across over to a castle or from a castle on this big giant road trip. It's literally the exact same thing. So I'm like, well, why, why would you poo poo on this game versus poo poo on the other game? It's like, well, they're the exact same thing. You, you have to go like cross the entire world to get from one place to the next. You know, it just so happens that one of them has, you know, uh, a lightning field that, spawns nothing but fucking cactar i don't know maybe they're just mad because there's not very many female characters and like the only female character that you really see a lot of in the base game has like her tatas hanging out like halfway through her through her uh, jacket maybe i don't know i don't know it, if if that was such a big problem then why was devil may cry five so popular like pfft. Who cares? I don't know. That, that clearly most did not gamers stop really, anybody. Most gamers don't care. I think it's just... I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. The entire game... The base game... I never actually played through any of the DLC, so I don't know. But I will admit, the base game did feel like an extended version of a guy's night, but there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having a guy's night out. Nothing wrong with that Boys at all. Boys night. Boys night. There's nothing Boys wrong night. With that, you know? Boys night. Boys night. There's nothing... There's nothing wrong with having that, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It could be any number of things that you know triggered people, and they're just like, "Oh Can my I... god, this game's this game's so terrible." And it's like, uh, whatever. Who cares? I don't Shut care. up. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I did watch a little bit of. Uh, I watched um, Net Nobody, formerly known as Scott as Minecraft. He actually streams every day now, and uh, he was streaming a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of Modern Warfare last night, and it didn't really seem that interesting to me. Of course, I wasn't the one playing, but it just really didn't seem like something I would want to play either way, so I'm like, eh, <sighs> it's there. I'd rather watch him play mm-hmm. Fortnite, to be honest. Yeah, and I don't know. Like, that, I've probably said it before, and you probably know about it, or at least I can't remember who knows what about me, but it's like, I, I just can't get into any of the streaming stuff. It's like, I, I just don't. I mean... Like some people might be able to be like, oh, hey, cool. I'm learning something new about how I would play it in a more like serious manner. Like, great, cool. I'm all right. I'll go without. I don't know. I kind of like, I like my videos edited, but here's the thing. I'm a big fan of the guy. And since he doesn't like record and upload, you know, I don't really have much of a choice but to... You know, but to watch the streams if I want to see what he's up to. Mm-hmm. So it's not that bad, though. Yeah, I guess. I mean, plus I'm a member on his I channel anyway, so yay. Yay! All I right. Gave, I, I give him five dollars every month or something. It's not that bad. He gets nice. he, he reads my comments first, which is cool. Could you? Could you? Could you give me five dollars? I'll talk about you all you want. <laughs> you talk to me. I don't need you to talk about me. Wait, so you're paying a guy $5 just to say your comments first, and yet I'm not getting paid and I'm talking to you for an hour? What bullshit is this? <laughs> well, and you know what? It's not, He's not even guaranteed to see my comment, anybody. Like, it's highlighted, but there's no guarantee that he's going to read it or see it, so. Eh. We're in the Discord. We're we're literally talking. This is, I, I, I just feel like your priorities are, are out of whack there, bud. I, I will admit, I do get <laughs> special access to his Discord, which is pretty cool. I get, like, the members-only chat. Which is really boring, to be honest with you. He's like nobody's ever in there. Nobody's mm-hmm. ever in the members chat. Like he, like he's never in there. His friends are never in there. So I'm just kind of sitting there, just looking for this chat, and I'm just or looking through this chat, not for it, through it, 
And I'm just like, well, this is a bunch of bullshit. But I don't care. I'm a big fan of the guy. So five bucks a month, no problem. It's either that or pay for my Verve, and Verve really fucked me, fucked me over. So I'm not giving them any money until they fix their system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's honestly, a I, there's a rant there, but I'm gonna let that slide. I feel like I should almost do the same thing when it comes to WWE and my subscription to the network. It's like I don't, I don't know. It's just not. I don't know. They're making some really dumb decisions lately, and I honestly have stopped caring about the product. And I haven't watched the weekly show in forever. And the last pay per view, Hell in the Cell, was absolutely bullshit finish. And I'm just like, uh, I should probably cancel my subscription. But you know, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, I've never really been been all that into uh wrestling i mean like i have i have respect for the wrestlers and i have respect for everything that they do i'm not going to be one of those stupid uh cliche you know uneducated fucks that's like oh you know it's fake right oh why would you want to watch a bunch of big strong guys in their underwear throw each other around it's like it's no I, soap I know opera. it's that's why like, i know it's i know it's like way more than what those people say it is it's soap opera for guys. It, it really it is. It, it seriously yeah. is. It is really, really, yeah. But I, I know, uh, I, I know, like a couple of my friends used to be really into it, and they have since canceled their subscriptions. A couple of years ago, they canceled their subscriptions because they just got tired of it. Yeah. And I guess, I guess Honestly. now it's just starting to get worse because everybody else is like saying, "Yeah, I'm canceling it. I'm canceling it." Like I see it all over Twitter, and they're just like, "Yeah, I'm done with it." Hmm. Well, it was just bullshit because, like, the last pay-per-view that the main event is a no disqualification, uh, no whatever cage match. Hell, It was a Hell in the Cell match, and that whole stipulation is the fact that they can use, like, anything they want on the their opponent and do whatever and, and get them down for a count of three. And they would, you know, get them, uh, hit them with chairs and uh kendo sticks and all manners of you know different stuff and then make it so the person can't answer the count of three like you know you do but then the guy one of the guys goes and throws a ladder on the dude tries to pin him he kicks out at two he smash he tries smashing him in the face with a uh a toolbox gets up at the count of two, puts the toolbox between the ladder and puts that on top of the guy's head and then hits him again with a chair, gets up at the count of two, finally gets to the point where he's like, what do I have to do? So he goes under the t- thing, gets a sledgehammer and then hits him with the sledgehammer on the, technically hitting the box that was on top of the ladder that his head was underneath, quote oh, unquote. God. Obviously that's where the safety is and the fact that he hit the box that was on top of the ladder and his head wasn't like under the box. It was obviously in a safer position, but then the referee calls for the bell and I'm like, what the fuck is this? This is a, you said it was no disqualification. Exactly. And then they turn around the next day and they're like, no, it's the referee is able to call it for whatever reason, that uh, he can call the end of the match if it means the uh, uh, the. Well, I'm like, shut up! All right, this is this is a bullshit end to a bullshit match. I mean, y- yeah, yeah, it was between Seth Rollins and the Fiend, aka Bray Wyatt, and everybody oh, okay. loves the Fiend right now, and nobody wants to necessarily boo the Fiend or have him lose to anybody, and Seth Rollins is on such this huge push that. There's no way that he could lose to the fiend, but nobody wants the fiend to lose. So they were, you know, they backed themselves into this corner with the match where neither one of these people should lose and the people don't want either one to lose. So they had to make a bullshit screwy ending to the match, which nobody was going to be happy with. So it's just like, there's no, there's no way out of this match. So why did you book it? Why did you let this thing go through? And yet, it still happened, and the ending happened, and everyone hated it, and I don't know. All the while, AEW that. has you know a thriving weekly program that is beating WWE's uh, Wednesday op- uh, um, presentations by a landslide, 
And wow. it's like, well, why do we put up with this bullshit? Why don't we just go support somebody else? And now, now that, you know, ignoring TNA or ring of honor or any one of your local, uh, uh, local, um, what do you call it? Local promotions, local promotions. You know, there, there's a secondary option that you can pick, you know, you don't have to be resigned to WWE or nothing but crap. There's another player in the game now that everybody's willing to, uh, back. Sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. Competition breeds nothing but positivity for the consumer. So it's good. That's true. And, And everybody will talk about it up, up left, right, and center about how, you know, competition in the marketplace, competition in the marketplace. And it's like, yeah, well, why don't we as consumers go and just go watch something else, you know? Yeah, well, I think a lot of people have, like, uh, some type of loyalty to the brand, or at least they try, you know, they try to have a loyalty to the brand. But, you know, like, personally, me, myself, I have no loyalty to really much of anything, much less any brands. But uh, I can kind of understand that if somebody's like, oh, you know, I really don't want to cancel my subscription. I've, you know, I've been a fan of WWE for so long. It's like, I can kind of understand that. You know, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's like me deleting all of my video games. It's like, I'm dedicated to to my games. I need that stuff. And yet, you know, I say this, that competition is good for the marketplace, but yet I am... I am just the biggest hypocrite right now because you said that deleting all your video games, it's like, well... I'm I'm sitting here like taking a stance against downloading the Epic Store and going off and getting Borderlands 3 on the Epic Store or getting The Outer Worlds on the Epic Store and I'm waiting for these things to come out to the Steam because I I just feel like I I, I can sit there and say that like oh pff, why would you want to support WWE when there's AEW but at the same time I'm sitting there going no don't support the Epic Store stay on Steam and I'm just like I'm such a fucking hypocrite sometimes, you know what I mean? Everybody is in one way or another. Anybody who says they're not is a fucking liar. Yeah. That might sound anyway. ignorant, and on some level that probably is, but fuck it, I don't care. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, I'd rather just go watch something else and... Yeah, I get whatever, it's uh, fine. <laughs> just watch whatever you want, play whatever you want, and it's like, if you want to wait for stuff to come out on Steam and you don't want to get it right away off the Epic Store... Who cares? That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it just sucks that three of my friends are currently playing Borderlands 3 on the Epic Store, and I'm just like, Aah. But then again, I'm also the guy that doesn't buy a video game right when it comes out anyway. I, I notoriously only buy games when they're on, like, a 75% off sale on Steam. And I'm like, all right, now I'll get it. So you even if it was on Steam, I you still would have loved Fallout there. 76 since they put that thing on sale, like, just a little bit after it came out. You would love that game. Oh, no. No, I wouldn't. The fact that it would have been cheap, you would have loved, but the game itself, probably not. Yeah, and I've I've been hearing tales that uh, what's come from the uh, Fallout first thing that has happened. So I I I actually don't know what that is, and that's saying something, because I'm actually a really big Bethesda fan, and I'm a decent-sized Fallout fan as well, but I have no idea what Fallout first is. I don't know. Is that like... Is that what they call the Fallout 76 subscription service? I think it's something to do with uh, a subscription uh, paid server. I don't know. Because I know that I know that Fallout 76 does have now a subscription service where you get like a private world and stuff like that for what I assume to be 15 bucks a month. And I know ESO has a, has a subscription service of which I pay because I love that game, but ESO Mm -hmm. doesn't crash and it's not a glitchy mess. And I don't have to worry about paying $7 for a refrigerator, but that's just Mm -hmm. me. That's just my point of view. (laughs) So fallout first is a membership program that, has private worlds play in a private world exclusively for you and up to seven friends a scrap box which is unlimited storage for crafting components in your own new scrap box container a survival tent a new placeable fast travel point with a stash sleeping bag and more for your basic needs atoms receive 1650 atoms per month to use in the atom shop 
Ranger Armor outfit, an iconic Fallout outfit exclusively for members. Icons and emotes pack, unique icons and emotes available only to members. All right. So, okay. It's such bullshit. I hate that. That kind of sounds it actually sounds really similar to ESO Plus because it's like if you pay if you pay the 15 bucks a month for ESO Plus you get crowns which are the premium currency like Adams are for Fallout 76 and you get like 1500 mm-hmm. 1600 of those but you get you get so much more for for your ESO Plus cuz you get like you get like double if you own a player home you get like you get to fit double the amount of things in there and you get like uh you get like free stuff from the crown store every now and then like you'll get you get like uh you'll get like free potions like really good potions too you'll get like free statues every now and then like miniature figurines and stuff to place in your house mm-hmm. and you get you just, you just all around you just get really good stuff for uh for ESO plus and I really don't I don't I don't really see other than the private world I don't really see a whole lot that's appealing uh to fallout first other than the private world but i don't know eh. and and like we sit there and i won't we but i'm sitting here looking at this as like the same bs that they had in what was that fallout not fallout sorry um battlefield 3 premium i want to say and it was like okay well that's like the problem with Battlefield 3 premium was a, was the fact that it's like okay you get premium servers that only other premium players can be on. Okay, well so a ghost town nobody's going to be there. And okay, so you want to play Fallout 76 with uh, for up to you and seven friends. Okay, I thought this was supposed to be a lush wide open place that you're supposed to deal with like I thought PVP was supposed to be like the name of the game and half of the experience if you're just cutting out all of that you might as well just be playing minecraft in creative mode like you're not getting anything out of this you know like half the game is being ruined by it yeah sorry to jump in but it's like you know a better game that would be that that would that would just be better just a, a better game than fallout 76 if you want a nice big open world you know et cetera et cetera and you want to play with like a like seven five six i don't know how many friends you can fit Play Conan Exiles. Play that mm-hmm. game. It is way better. The world is the world is big. I don't know if it's as big as Fallout seventy six. Probably not. And you don't fast travel. I don't. You know, I don't think you fast travel. But whatever. You can get your own world. You know. You can. You can do this and that and the other thing. Just. 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 Just do that. Just do that. Just play Conan Exiles because it's a good mm-hmm. game and it's. It's just decent all around, you know. It's not, it's not like a triple A, but it's just good for what it is, you know. It's good for what it is, and um, the only thing that you would have to contend with is there is a tether distance to the host. That's that's your like, only. You that's the only downfall is that there's a tether distance, so you can't move as far away from the person who's hosting the server. No, but let me mm. tell you. You can have, like, the whole map is sorted into, like, grid squares, so it's a grid map. And the squares are decent size, so I would say that the player can be about two squares away from the host. Mm -hmm. And that's more than far enough to gather resources, to hunt, to kill enemies for XP and loot... That's more than enough room to do pretty much anything you would want to do, as long as the host doesn't really, like, as long as the host stays in, like, a general area, it's all fine. And that, the only thing that that means is that if you want to go on an adventure, you'll just have to go as a group. Other than that, that's all. Because me and my friends play Conan Exiles, and I host the server, so usually, usually what we do is, I'm just sitting there building my house, and everybody else is just, like, a couple squares away from me. You know, building their own things, gathering resources, and if somebody's like, "Hey, let's go, let's go," you know, explore, you know, this this place, this cave, whatever, I'll just be like, "Okay, give me a few minutes to finish building this portion of the base, and then we're off." You know, it's pretty simple. You just have to be cooperative with each other. What cooperative on a multiplayer game? 
What is so, this? So, fuck Fallout 76, go play Conan. Which Conan was this again? Conan Exiles. Mm. Like, go okay. play Conan Exiles. You, 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 you probably won't regret it. And there's no fucking subscription. The only thing that you would have to pay, I think, is if you want to host your own server, like, you can, like, I was hosting a local server, but if you want to mm-hmm. host, like, an actual online server and not have the tether distance, you would ha- you would actually have to rent a server for, like, a certain amount of money every month. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I am not renting a server. And, like, I, I think the only servers I could rent are, like, Chinese servers. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, but it's like, I don't know, does that mean the language is going to be in Chinese? You know, no, it how means does that, that, you know, you're going to have to deal with immense lag, because if it's a Chinese server, then that means that you have to have your signal go all the way over to China, and then all the way over back to whatever other player is going on. Right. Because I, I guess, like, all the American servers were taken, because when when we got Conan Exiles, it was on PlayStation 4, and it was a PS mm-hmm. Plus game, so obviously mm-hmm. Conan Exiles had a massive boost in players. So all the American servers were actually taken and all sold out. So like the only <laughs> servers left at that time for us to rent were Chinese servers. Jeez Louise. And they were like, some some it was really weird. Some of them were really expensive. Some of them were not. It was like if I'm not if I'm not wrong, some of them were different prices. And I'm like I don't know why they're different prices. They should just all be the same thing. But whatever. Either way, fuck yeah. Fallout 76, go play Conan or Minecraft or something, anything else. Something that you don't have to pay for every month. Mm. Or play ESO where it's more detailed and you actually have human NPCs. So speaking of stuff that you you can go off and watch that isn't Fallout 76, uh, I, actually ref- I actually figured out my login information to actually get into... Uh, an, uh, my HBO account and I actually was able to sit there and look at or not look at what am I talking about oh yeah I'm gonna go look at no uh I was actually able to watch the first two episodes of um the new Watchmen series okay so uh HBO has decided to make a sequel series based off the original comic book uh of the Watchmen not and they're being very clear about this. This is not a sequel to the Zack Snyder movie, The Watchmen. This is based off of the comic book, The Watchmen. Okay. And I'm, I'm sitting there thinking about it, and I'm like, okay, what are the main differences between these two? Okay, Zack Snyder's Watchmen, these people actually do have superpowers and actually, you know, have these super strengths. They're not like, you know, all flying super Superman Superman and women like uh, Dr. Manhattan or Superman, but they actually all do have like the super strength and the ending up uh, spoiler is um, an explosion made by Dr. Manhattan. When in the original comic book, this um, the ending was a giant uh, half the population wiped out due to a interdimensional uh, squid uh, creature coming in and warping in and just killing a bunch of people and, Destroying like half the life on the planet, kind of thing. Uh, Sounds like some type of uh, Lovecraftian thing mixed with it, Cloverfield. Very, very Lovecraftian uh, situation, and it's very, uh, very close homages, kind of to that, but not so much a grand leader Lovecraftian like Cthulhu, but more of just a giant just thing. Um, oh, cool. And and the fact that the characters in the comic book Watchmen aren't actually, you know, superheroes. They're just people in capes and whatnot pretending to be superheroes. They don't have, like, super strength or whatever. Obviously, with the exception of Dr. Manhattan, which came back and he's able to breathe and make clones of himself and do all this. He is actually somewhat super-powered. And, like, the tech is just a little bit more advanced in this version. So it's just like, you know, there's, there's advancements that, the human race have made but they're not so much that you know they're sitting there just punching through cinder block walls and you know flying oh. through the sky and whatnot it, it's not like that um so it's being very clear on no these are not superheroes these are people dressed up in hero outfits and i'm two episodes into the new series and i'm Anybody who saw the Zack Snyder film, well, I'm kind of projecting at this point, but a lot of people who saw the um, uh, Watchmen movie or read the comic book can sort of like 
project themselves onto or see the value in the character Rorschach. Uh, kind of this like gre- greasy, dirty, assholey kind of uh, noir. Asshole. Yeah, assholey. Huh? Um, <laughs> assholey noir character that's very brooding and like, uh, I'm, uh, I am here to save the city and uh, I'm going to be the person. And it's like, okay, great. Everybody is like, oh man, I love Rorschach. But even, um, uh, not Zack Snyder, what's his name? The guy that made it. Same guy that did V for Vendetta and 300. Uh, whatever his name is. And if anybody ever comes up to him and be like, oh, Rorschach's my favorite character. He's like, fine. You're the worst kind of person then. Uh, <laughs> he's like, he's actually supposed to be like this kind of dirty, you know, terrible person. Like, if Batman wasn't, you know, as charming and regalia as as Bruce Wayne is supposed to be, you know what I mean? Okay. And but yet people still like Rorschach because he's sort of played off to be the not main character, but the person that we're supposed to be like listening to and viewing as us the character. And it's like a lot of people are like, Great, I love Rorschach. I want to cosplay Rorschach. This this is a really cool character. He fights for what he believes in. And then immediately in episode one of the new show, turns out that Rorschach's identity is being used as a sort of um, uh, an idol or a you know a pillar for a uh, racist white supremacist group. And I'm like, son of a bitch! God damn it! Like up it's my no- favorite character. I'm like. Uh, well he's dead so you can't really ruin him but the people like his story gets out there and the people that like really latch on to it and people who are like yeah fuck cops are also the same people that are going to be like yeah whites have all the power and i'm like no don't 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 think that don't be racist you know and it's like god dang it i liked rorschach but now i can't sit there and be like oh yeah rorschach he's the coolest like now with the new show it's like uh i don't know is he a racist is he white supremacist I'd be like damn it <laughs> oh man but right. it, it's still great like it's still a great show and i'm uh, like cool. i said it's only on two episodes right now as of recording and i'm caught up to ep- the end of episode two and i'm like huh where is this going where 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 is the show taking it and i i like what the they're doing in this know. world yeah, only the writers know. Oh, and I guess Regina King, since all the episodes are filmed. Yeah, fair enough. I don't know if it's getting a season two or not. I don't think they've talked about that. Well, if it's good, if it, hopefully it does. Well, or if it's really good and it ends on a great note and then they just soil it by continuing on or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. It's sort of like, sort of like, uh, kind of like Bloodborne because everybody's, because it's a really fucking good game and everybody's kind of like, you know, I want a sequel, I want a sequel. You know, everybody's like, I want a Bloodborne sequel. And some people are like, you know, it was such a really good fucking game, they don't really know if they want to see a sequel because they're like, I don't know if it's going to shit on it or not. So everybody's kind of on the fence about it. Well, also the fact that, you know, well, Dark Souls got a sequel and, you know, everyone was okay with Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3 and... Then I mean, hell, there was even well, how many Demon Souls were there too? I think there was only two Demon Souls. Right, because there's Demon Souls, then Dark Souls, three of those, and then Bloodborne, and now uh, Shikiro, Shadows Die Twice. Was Demon and Dark Souls connected? I don't know. I have no idea. I've like, never actually played Demon or Dark. Bloodborne was my introduction into the Soulsborne series. I only played the first Dark Souls, and I only got to the Capra Demon, but I vaguely I, understand the plot of it. I have this. I have the. I have the trilogy. I need to play through it. Hmm. I need to play through the trilogy. That'd well, clearly fun. you just need to uh, get good and play play the game. Now I will. I, I will boast and say I am a fucking good Bloodborne player. I know my way around that game. Hmm. But Dark Souls, it's a different animal because, like Dark Souls, I think you can, you can like tank a few hits with your shield on uh, in Dark Souls. And your armor, I guess, kind of matters if you were wearing like good armor or something. Maybe I have no idea. But I Bloodborne, I never you got can't that good. That. If you take if you take like one too many hits on Bloodborne, your 
well, not not one too many. If you take like two hits on Bloodborne, you're fucking dead. Unless you have a crazy long health bar after farming a bunch of blood echoes to get your health up, you're pretty much mm-hmm. dead after two hits. So Bloodborne relies on a lot of dodging. It's very, very, very fast paced. Mm. As I guess compared to the other uh, the other Dark Souls, because I guess Dark Souls again is kind of like more slow. I guess I'm not sure. I remember yeah, I once. I, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. You remember one time what? Oh, I remember somebody put out like a Bloodborne animation. It was like if it was. It's titled "If Bloodborne Was an Anime." The animation is <laughs> absolutely beautiful. The animation is very, very, very well done. But I don't like it because hmm. it doesn't capture what Bloodborne is. Because, like, the music is, like, really, really upbeat, kind of. And it's like, no, that's not what it is. There are no happy endings in Bloodborne. There's, you know, it's it's just not, you know, I just didn't like the music. The music I didn't like. That's the only thing that put it off for me. Because it's like, that doesn't capture the essence, in my opinion. That doesn't capture the essence of what the game is. Mm Because if somebody doesn't know what Bloodborne is, and that guy uploaded that video, and the first person to see that... You know, if if somebody saw that and that was their first, you know, glimpse into what that game was, they might think, oh, that looks really epic. That looks really cool. And it is. But they might go into it expecting something to be a little bit more uh, not as dark and not as uh, morbid, I guess. Mm-hmm. And they will be completely shocked if they're if they're not like into that stuff. They'll be completely shocked and put off by it. Eh, but that's I, just my opinion. But I feel like I would have enough trust in, uh, I don't know, bu- the buyers and be like, oh, yeah, well, you know, understanding that, you know, hey, this is a fan created thing versus actual product. You know, a lot of people will sit there and be like, OK, well, I can understand that, you know, what I'm seeing here isn't exactly what the game is like. And then just simply going on the store, whatever it is that wherever you can buy Bloodborne. Uh, PlayStation exclusive. Like, you know, you might go into the store and see that, you know, a trailer or the preview of the game be like, oh, well, yeah, it didn't look anything <laughs> like that. I don't think anybody yeah. is going to be like, uh, feel like, oh, I feel cheated this video. I don't think anybody's going to feel that way. No, I didn't. No, I guess not sure how to come back from that because you're you're right. I don't know. I just didn't really like how they how they had the music done. Like I said, the animation itself is absolutely gorgeous. I I love what they did. I don't know. I was just like, but I've been there. Really, it, to me, it's just like just this just doesn't really do the game any justice. But eh, they, they they if they if they clearly liked the game that much to go through the trouble of making that animation, mm-hmm. then it's like yeah, I can definitely respect that for sure. Mm-hmm. Like I can respect. And I the guess. Hell out of that. Yeah, I, yeah, obviously, you know, I lost it. <laughs> I was going to go someplace with that. I lost it, though. Oh, no. You were saying oh. something? I don't know. I can't remember. But, uh... Well, I, I will say, I didn't I didn't, I didn't, didn't think about it from your point of view. Like, yeah, have, have a little bit of faith in the people who would actually go onto the PlayStation Store and, and look it up and just be like, yeah, this is not... This doesn't look like the animation, but I mean, it's not a big deal. I didn't expect anybody to get upset over it. I certainly wasn't upset over it. I was just pointing out that I was just pointing out that it just didn't do just didn't do it justice. But eh, that's just my that's just my fucked up opinion. Mm-hmm. So people can uh, disagree with that all they want. To continue, right? So uh, something that what came out yesterday that I definitely want to talk to you about and something that honestly the internet kind of, well, at least in my circle of the internet hasn't stopped talking about for the last half a year to a year, I guess. Um, uh, did you happen to hear about what launched, uh, yesterday morning, uh, a certain pilot to a very, uh, well anticipated, uh, 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 online cartoon. Yep. Oh, the pilot launched, huh? Yeah, the pilot launched yesterday. And I got to say, it's, you know, uh, I was expecting uh, big things from um, Vizzy Pop. from Vizzy Pop and her team and the entire show. And, you know, giving uh, getting looks at teasers and trailers here and there. The uh, 
scene from the limo about getting your taco on the twist. I was like, okay, ha, ha I get, I kind of yeah. get this character. And then I get like what this, uh, Cali character is going for. And then like the video of when the, uh, radio demon walks through and I'm like, Oh, okay. We're kind of getting an introduction to these characters, but obviously these weren't going to be the only characters. And I was really uh, pleasantly surprised by the, um, the sort of world that they're crafting for this. It's awesome. It's a really, it's a good episode to get the show started. And I'm really excited about, um, the fact that they actually finished it and got it done. Um, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. It, it really is, uh, entertaining episode i obviously i wish there was more but you know that's just the nature of this thing it's it's a one pilot episode and maybe maybe there'll be another episode after this or maybe there's not but you know it's good that's good that's that's really awesome to hear and as as somebody who's trying to basically do that exact same thing you know, trying to come up with a pilot get it animated and get it out you know as somebody mm-hmm. who's trying to do that as a career I gotta say, mass massive respect to that, and I'll definitely be checking that out as soon as we're done here. Oh, of course, I, yeah, you I, definitely I gotta see that. I wanna, go watch I it. I want it to do well. I want it to be a full length series because that's you know, ever since I saw the trailer and I saw like a few bits and pieces on Twitter, and it's it it looks amazing. And I will admit, I do tend to gravitate more towards vulgarity. More or less and, for the sake that, of the fact that people don't really seem to like vulgarity much anymore, but, you know, a lot of people seem to be offended by that stuff. So every time I see somebody coming up with something like that, I tend to gravitate more towards it because it's like, yeah, we don't need to be all family friendly and sensitive to every fucking thing. So, yeah. And but that's the thing, though. I mean, like how many dumb, terrible adult cartoons out there are out there now? Like the good ones are maybe Bob's Burgers bojack horseman and like maybe one more you know that are currently in production obviously you can you can scroll back to like futurama and maybe like early family guy and maybe like classic simpsons but like everything that's animated that is meant to be an ma or mature rating is just garbage lately it is what are, absolutely what are a few tri- of the garbage ones currently Oh my god! Uh, I think it's called Corner Store. I want to say. Let me. Okay, let me. Heard of that one. Uh, like the ones you named off, the good ones. I actually, I, I've heard of them, but I haven't really paid much attention to any of the other ones, any of the bad ones. So I really don't know. Okay, so, um, why is it giving me all the classics? Okay, so, all right, never mind. So there's like Big Mouth, the Nick Kroll show that you know he's animated it's like it's got a absolutely disgusting art style and it's absolutely terrible it's like oh great we need another foul-mouthed uh teenage pubescent story of you know kid boners and crap i'm like great Great. i love it i can't get enough uh disenchantment which is made by the same people who did uh futurama okay Great. Yeah, I heard that was really I, good. I haven't seen it, but I heard it was all right. I'll get to it eventually. F is for family, which is this, you know, kind of sure. redneck. Think of like, think um, married with children, but animated. And it's just like, I don't care about that. Uh, there was drawn together that Comedy Central show back in the day. It was built to be like the crude, raunchy thing. And I'm like, yes, I get it. What else? Uh, you know, uh, well, I mean, it depends. Like, I think it depends on if the show has like a good story and good characters or if they are just relying on shock, shock humor, like current family guy who just kind of relies on shock humor and not really story anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh, uh, corner is gas it, is what it's called. Is American dad of. still being produced? Is that show still on air? I think it is. If not, it's getting um it's getting um reruns on TBS or maybe that's what I'm saying. And it's just like American Dad uh, was really good back in the day. I really like that. And if I it's still, like it was just, if it's still in production, I'll definitely have to watch it, you know, catch up. I, f- I feel like it was just trying to copy Family Guy's success. Well, the thing is, American Dad was supposed to be 
like the next step. American Dad was supposed to be uh, Seth Seth Green. He's the he's the creator of Family. Guy, Seth right? MacFarlane. Seth MacFarlane. Seth Green. Sorry. Mm-hmm. So Seth MacFarlane. Mm-hmm. That was supposed to be his next step from Family Guy because he created both shows. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, I guess just I'm not sure how to explain it. Uh, I think the fans didn't. I guess there was like this outcry. It was like, oh no, we don't want Family Guy to end. And they thought they they still think, to my knowledge, Family Guy should have ended a long time ago. Yep. And they were like, you know, I, I guess Seth MacFarlane said, you know, American Dad was supposed to be kind of the next step. You know, that was what he was going for. And mm-hmm. I know that it was. I know that a lot of people compare it to just kind of like, oh, it's just a copy. But no, the characters are actually a lot different. And it's, I, I don't know. I, like like I said, I don't know if it's still being made. Even if it is, I haven't seen any of the current episodes. If it is still in production, I didn't even see any of the later episodes. So I definitely have to catch up. But from what I've seen, it actually wasn't all that bad at all. I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, it was fine. I just, I, I, it, it like all these shows just vastly outstay their welcome. And I'm just not at all down for it. I, I'm just not okay with any of this like dumb, stupid crap. Like it, it's only just now refreshing that like obviously my acquaintances and friends and whatnot have worked on this new show that actually has a very interesting and different art style. It's very flowy, you know. I've enjoyed Vizzy's uh, animation since what was it Eyes that was her uh, school master's project or something along those lines or blah 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 I can't remember whatever the animation it was that she made before uh, Die Young that Kesha um, video that she made which by the way was also great I'm not knocking it I'm just saying that like I got on uh, with Eyes in the Woods or whatever it was called and I thought that was a great animation uh, back in the day and kind of sort of following along with her since then. And I'm glad that she's moved on and uh, developed this team and all of her friends and the people working with her, uh, especially Ashley Nichols, who I have uh, ran into before in the past. And she's been a good con buddy and friend, um, really, really stand up girl, uh, stand up nice. lady, you know, nice, nice, uh, really, really cool. Um, cool. Great. And I'm just, I'm just glad that like, there's actually good looking adult humor cartoons out there. Not just the same crappily bad aesthetic trash that we've been getting for like the last five years. Yeah, I'm I'm really glad. Excluding to see Bojack Horseman, obviously, because I actually like that. I'm glad to see that it's we have like. Me. I'm I'm glad to see that we have like better, better shows seeming to be coming out. I think it's because a lot of. I kind of think it's because you know, like uh, people our age are kind of starting to finally, you know, like the younger generation is kind of starting to get be- get into the entertainment industry, and I guess people are. Mm-hmm you know, it's bringing something new, something fresh to the, to the industry. And I think that's going to be really, really good for, you know, from, from now on. Mm. It just gives, I think it, it, to me, it just gives, gives you something to look forward to. Well, gives me something to look forward to personally. Mm. Cause I, I yeah, definitely want to like, check out that pilot for has been hotel. That sounds really fucking cool. It's, it's honestly really great. And it, and like, I'm also like, it's dealing with very adult content of like, you know, it's a bunch of demons. It's in hell. It's, you know, uh, you know, hotel that rehabilitates sinners. Like that's, that is trying to, I I like that concept. I, I, I love that concept. That's cool. In a world in literally a world where nobody wants to do that though. Like what I loved about this whole entire thing is that it didn't really necessarily follow the same kind of tropey thing where, uh, it's, you know, Hey, we're going to do this thing. Um, Hey, I know everyone was making fun of you, but you know, Hey, I think I could do this. No, it doesn't do that either. It, it, it doesn't feel tropey. It's like, yeah, we do have the bright eyed, uh, individual that is trying to make a difference in this world, but nobody seems to be listening. But, there's nobody else that's going with this. There's nobody else that is in there. Well, except for her girlfriend, which, uh, you know, it's like, okay, you know, there's, it, it doesn't feel tropey. It doesn't feel vulgar. It doesn't feel, uh, well, except for obviously the characters who are vulgar and, you know, they, but it doesn't seem to be over vulgar. It's not them, you know, dropping constant, uh, constant F bombs. It's not them being like, yeah you know, you know, shit, fuck, shit, 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 like left, right, and left. It's like, no, this is actually yeah. uh, a well-established, well-thought-out story that 
I, awesome. I want to see where it goes next. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hooked. I'm in, I'm down. I'm buying in on this concept. It's like, okay, where are we going next? Like, what is the next step? Do we need to like get this in front of a, you know, a studio? Do we need to get in front of like, you know, who else, you know, what, what can we do to make sure that this story continues? That's definitely a problem I'm going to have to face with my show. <laughs> yeah. Find, find well, somebody don't, don't to we all fund it. Mm. Yeah. That, oh. that same question that all of us creators have to uh, face. What is our next step? What are we doing after this? You know? Yeah. Every, everybody has that. Every, everybody has that, uh, that, um, that problem at some point unless you come from you know like a wealthy family or whatever you know that can that can pay for your you know for your production and your your stuff like that and if you if you do come from that there's nothing wrong with that you know whatever but a lot of people most most creators don't so it's just like eh, you know it, it can be frustrating mm-hmm. at times but other than that it's not that big of a deal i guess just if you if you love what you do just keep on doing it and you'll you'll find a way if you if you love it enough you'll find a fucking way mm-hmm. you'll find a way and, and it's like it's what people always say about these kind of things it's like if you do what you love then it's never going to be work and if you do what you love long enough somebody will want to pay you for it you know it's like if you want to if you like riding horses go ride horses you know and eventually people are like hey you're really good at riding horses can you teach me to ride horses if you pay me to i will be like you or join like a There's polo your... team or something yeah I man i guess you could try that mhm that's pretty it's cool good. though yeah like uh but i just wanted to run back to the vulgarity real quick you know when you said it's not overly vulgar which is great I just wanted to point out that, you know, I, I remember I said, you know, I, I, I tend to gravitate more towards that stuff. I just wanted to point out, I I don't, I had like, I had like a really good way to phrase it. Now I'm like, let me see if I can adjust. Uh, I don't gravitate towards something because it's vulgar. And if it's like too vulgar, it is a turn off because at that point it's just annoying. But I, mm-hmm. I like it when a show, a creator, whatever... I like it when they're not afraid of it. That's what I like. I like it when they're not afraid to say, "Oh, I fucked up." You know, not not, "Oh, I goofed up" or "Oh, I did an oopsie." No, when they say, "I fucked up." I I, I like it when they're not afraid to say it. When they're not afraid to say, "Oh shit, look what I did." Oh fuck. You know, when they're when they're not afraid to say it. Not when they overdo it, but when they're not afraid of Oh no, somebody's not going to like that. You know, I, I just like it when they're not afraid. So you're not you're not drawn to the vulgarity. You're drawn to the realness of the situation. Yes. And that's why I use you're vulgarity not... in my in my writing, because it, it to me it asserts how serious a situation is. Yeah. That and that's that's it... what I'm drawn to. Mm-hmm. And I totally I, I I understand that. And I had a feeling that's kind of where you were coming from but obviously like that's because i know you and i appreciate that you know you're uh, willing to take that time to kind of be like okay this is what i mean because you know it's good it's important yeah well because I mean, viewers yeah. the viewers may not understand and will be writing in <laughs> at kurioku why uh it's just an lord who wants nothing but you know swears and whatnot it's like no because no not that at all not that at all i i get annoyed by excessive vulgarity as much as anybody else like sometimes it does get tiring and it's like for the love of shit can you just speak normal for once yeah just like not every sentence needs an f-bomb no it it fucking doesn't (laughs) insert joke here uh i think i i think we uh i think we had a really good good talk this time around episode two feeling a little feeling a lot more comfortable now (laughs) Right. And, you know, I I really like it. it. It was a good episode. Remember, if you have any uh, questions or anything about, uh, what do we say? The, I, I didn't get to this part of the podcast last week uh, from editing yet. <laughs> what did we say the hashtag was? Hashtag, just hashtag the maybe pile? I hope so, because that's what we're going with. Okay. I hope Hashtag so. Hashtag ask the maybe pile if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or if you want to uh, write in a suggestion of what you would like us to talk about or whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah, by all means, go ahead and uh, use the hashtag, tweet at us, you know, et cetera, et cetera. 
uh, we'll just mm-hmm. get everything down and uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we're going to start off, you know, we're probably going to have a small audience at first so we can take pretty much everything into consideration that everybody says. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, do you have anything else to add, Tony? Um, I'm going to be in LA this weekend. Obviously, uh, no one's probably going to be able to meet up with me because... I'm not really going to be meeting up with anybody. This is me just bragging about the fact that I'm taking a uh, road trip this weekend. Uh, <laughs> well, fuck you too, Anthony. <laughs> like, All right. Uh, no, uh, plugs and whatnot that would normally go here. Um, I I might put it, I might try to vlog or something or get back into the uh, media creation, whatever. Um, you know what? Please do vlog. I think it would be cool. I think it'd be cool to see. Okay, I'll, I'll I'm gonna be mostly spending a lot of time with my buddy Steve, and right. figure that out. So uh, I will, um, I'll try to I'll try to figure it out. I'll try to get something together, and I'll try to crack out a video or something. Awesome, awesome. All right. So well, keep an eye out for that, uh, and probably by next week I'll have a channel or something that I'll put it out on, where uh, cool. people can see my video adventures and whatnot. Cool. And I'm also looking forward to you uploading your uh, movie reviews here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm working on that. And obviously with November, I uh, will become, uh, will uh, have me writing a lot more. So part of that writing will be uh, movie reviews and whatnot. I awesome. sort of have an ad, ad strata or ad astra uh, review kind of there. And I've also kind of got a, uh, uh, a Joker review and whatnot from my opinions that night. But they weren't really like fully formed enough to be an actual script for a video. So I'll, I'll try to do that real quick just as a kind of, you know, it is something here. Awesome. Awesome. I I think uh, I will definitely be looking forward to seeing that and hearing your thoughts. And uh, with that, I do believe we're going to end it here. Thank you everybody for tuning in and listening. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, hashtag the maybe pile follow us on twitter and i think that's it we will see you later goodbye bye